Lord, we believe there is a system in you that is able to bring back the things that are lost. Are you praying? We have to pray this prophecy. We cannot go into the world. Job 42 verse 10, please. 42 verse 10. We're just going to pray. Hold the hands of someone. I want us to release a principle. Job 42 verse 10. I want you to read it. It's projected. One, two, read. I just want to stamp what the worship team just brought. I don't want us to just leave this song like this. It's not a special number. He said, the Lord turned the captivity of Job. When he did what? When he prayed. You are going to pray for the person you are holding the hands now. I want us to release the power that is in this principle. And he said, the Lord gave Job twice. That's restoration. Open your mouth and pray and prophesy. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. The Bible says that the prophet of God was having a meeting with the sons of the prophet, Elisha. And then the Bible records that the people told him, they said, Master, where we meet with you is too small. Let us go yonder to the other side. And then while they were felling trees to be able to make a place, the Bible says, an axe head that was borrowed fell. And he said, Alas, Master, and it was borrowed. I'm in double trouble And then the prophet said Where fell it And he showed him And he took a stick There is always a principle That connects prophecy with manifestation Lord that word and that principle I must engage To move to the other side Reveal it to me Lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray Lift your voice and pray There is always something in do Make sure your brain outside. Make sure your brain online. There is always a mystery to engage in. Show me, oh God, the mystery to the next level. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point and then we are seated. Father, visit me tonight. I didn't come to waste my time. I know there is more to know. There is more to know. There is more to know. It's a sacrifice for my destiny. There is more to know. Lift your voice and pray. 
Zekete barata paria de balabo, so prende que escala paria de capo shaba. There's always more to know. Always more to know. There's a kind of fish that you have to cook it for a very long time. What's the name? The stock, stock, is this? No, not stock, it's stock fish. Huh? No, 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 there, there's, I can't remember the name. You have to cook it for a long time if you really want to enjoy it. You can off the fire if you are tired and eat whatever is there. But if you are ready for a healthy meal, it will stretch your patience. The hunger is burning you from head to toe, but you wait. But you wait in hope. You see, that's the difference. You can wait in vain. Both of them look the same. That's what is painful. It is the end that will show whether you were waiting in vain or waiting in hope. Because those who are waiting in vain and those who are waiting in hope, everything looks exactly so. It is the end that justifies it. So don't just wait foolishly. You wait in hope. Hallelujah. Let me before we briefly touch on what the Lord put in my heart to bless us with. I just want to remind us again and again. I will keep doing this as God grants grace. As to why we are gathered here week in week out. We have been doing this for many years. And for those who have been part of the ministry long before Koinonia. In fact for many people it, it was every day every week laboring when when you look at people and they tell you they've been doing this for 10 years 15 years you're asking you mean this is how we, i mean nobody questions a student they look at you after 15 years and they say ah where are you now and they say oh finally i just got admission or oh, i'm writing work nobody says till now they say wow congratulations although the time is long but you are paying that price in hope one day they will ask you and you say oh sorry to tell you i got a job five years ago i'm now the director of the company and, ah, that little boy right in jersey listen god is going somewhere with you you can choose to end your dealing with him that's not going to hell you will not go to hell but you have pegged the extent to which god can do business with you I've told God there is no restraint as far as my work with you is concerned. I break every limit. Take me as far as you can take me. Stretch me as far as I can be stretched until I can carry an anointing that will bless a generation. Thank God for that which you have done, but this is child's play. In the visions of the Lord, I keep seeing it again that there is more. There is more. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, stretch me. Don't leave me like this. Don't leave me like this. I've seen signs and wonders, but this is not enough. I can't take what I have now to the nations. It will make me fight and quarrel. It will create competition. It's not unique enough. It's not distinguished enough. Oh, oh. Pay attention to what I'm saying. The key 
to be a real blessing is to be very anointed. Jesus himself showed us this. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 38 of Acts chapter 10. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Listen. Then he says he on the strength of that quality of the anointing he went about doing good you cannot do good just out of compassion the problems that befall mankind takes more than sympathy there are challenges in the lives of people that need you have to move further than comfort you are truly a blessing when you pay the price for the anointing young and old listen to me i'm speaking to you every man of god i know today who is doing mighty things for god who is being thanked and honored by nations they are only thanking the anointing the price to have brought something forth is painful it's not a gift it's a school in the spirit And the semester system does not work like school here. One course can take two days to finish. Another course can take four years to finish. You don't have a system with God and say, okay, after a particular predefined space of time, no. You can be moving forward in the spirit and then just stay in a particular class and for two years you have not moved. It's not backsliding. It is the cost content is bulky and you must be articulately trained. Now you can choose to think you are too you are too long and then graduate yourself. The door is always open. This lecturer does not close the door. It is your passion that closes the door. In this school of the spirit is students that close the door. The Holy Spirit does not close it, it is wide open. You can choose to walk out and say, Lord, I'm tired, please. I'm, I'm grateful with all the mediocrity moving around. And then you get angry and criticize others. Nothing will replace the absence of the presence and the anointing of the Spirit. I learn this every day. As I have the privilege of studying history, studying the moves of God and watching the things that God does through my life. Let me tell you, the anointing is... Is a commodity of inestimable worth. Never trivialize it. It is the secret of transgenerational relevance. You are truly a blessing when you pay the price to sustain the ability to change lives, to shift systems. Then you are a blessing. Sympathizing with people may help psychologically, but it will not prefer solutions. Any man that trivializes the anointing, it's about to waste his time on earth. I tell you the truth. It has nothing to do with ministry. I went for a meeting. You know, something happened. I didn't even tell my people. They watched that happen. We came in this evening from a meeting. I've been ministering in a conference. And as I was stepping out by the roadside just to go to the vehicle, probably they are here. I may not know. Two families who came on Friday for Koinonia, trusting God for a miracle of the fruit of the womb. The husbands together with their wives and they were friends. They decided to come and Koinonia didn't hold on Friday. So they now paid the price, went back to Kaduna to catch up with the final session of the meeting this morning. And when the meeting was done, I think the protocol helped them. I was walking and they came and um, they just looked at me. And compassion filled my heart. Now, whether or not I can solve their problem is another thing. And it's wickedness to claim I can solve it when I cannot. You see, let me tell you something. If you love God and you love people, you will pay the price for the anointing. That is the only way to bless people. I'm speaking to someone here. Here's a family experiencing this kind of challenge they don't need counseling they've had it they are not daft people i don't have to tell them just go and see doctors so, so, so and so I, I think they are adults enough they are married 
and they stood there and I watched the two women and watched their dear husband standing and I was standing in the middle of an opportunity that can begin a new journey for a family or brag like we always do as men of God lay hands on them and walk away and let them go back to disappointment and I looked at them years ago I would have been in I would have been in so much um, um, guilt because I knew I really wouldn't do anything about it but as the days have unfolded I have seen the spiritual synergy that this thing is a formula you can produce repeated results in the lives of people I caught the revelation of fruitfulness this year this year 2016 I caught it like a key and I said this is it I've gotten it there is a key when you search you will find when you wait for it to come and meet you you will never find it there's a lot of spiritual laziness we hope that God will carry the word and look for you no hospital moves around looking for patients the hospital is built even if you cannot walk they will carry you there there is a, a unit called emergency but you have to get there I see people many times and I see that we are not really passionate enough I'm like a spiritual historian I'm searching what is the secret behind predictable results in this area there must be a hunger and I looked at them and I told the women hold my hands and they held my hands and I knew their wombs were open yeah not necessarily because they were under the anointing rolling I knew there is a level of flawlessness that you can step into as far as the dispensing of the anointing at that point you will know that you are a blessing you can see a man 20 years of misery and his prayer is to have an encounter with Christ through you and the moment they see you they start rejoicing because they know their problems have ended let me teach you something I'm still going to use money I hope you don't mind um, let me use money watch this I think I've taught it here the anointing is like money there are things the level of anointing you have can afford to produce there are results that you are anointed is not enough everything that needs to be purchased in the realm of the spirit that is below the level of your anointing can be purchased but every challenge higher than your level of anointing cannot be purchased watch this i did the teaching this morning similar to this and i want to use that analogy if i have for instance i'm not saying anointing is money but if i have a thousand naira worth of the anointing as you mean and if you need maybe 200 naira worth of a miracle this miracle you need is within the jurisdiction of my anointing to produce it are you getting the point now so when you come to me i will be able to minister to you and give you an assurance that you are going back with a result are we together but if thank you if what you need is um let's say a miracle the equivalence of a phone of fifty thousand, am i anointed yes but the challenge he has is beyond the anointing that i possess to solve that problem don't just say anointing is anointing you are joking how god anointed jesus look at the extent that's why he could do good every problem jesus confronted was lower than his level of the anointing so there was flawless results I'm telling you this is is a revelation God gave me the reason why some things happen and some don't happen is that those that happen are within the level of the anointing to be able to release it and those that are above it so I can lay hands on you falling down is under this but the miracle you need is above it so you will fall down and yet not have the miracle are you getting what I'm saying now you can come to me say man of God prophesy over my life I lay hands on you and you fall because the dynamics of being slain in the spirit is, 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 the, is a basic dimension of the anointing it does not mean you received anything so when you possess such a dimension of grace 
such that the major problems of mankind is within the jurisdiction of your grace to solve at that point you are a living blessing the woman with the issue of blood if she touched peter she would have kept bleeding correct yeah but she touched a man who was dripping anointing from head to toe when you saw jesus you knew that was it if you did not receive from Jesus, it was not a lapse of power. It was your dishonor and lack of discernment. Do we have such people in Zaria? Do we have such people in Nigeria? Men that you can carry your trouble with joy. With joy, not with suspicion. That the moment you land in Koinonia, before service starts, you are dancing because you said, the devil that did not stop me from coming here. That's the end of it. When people testify, I am touched not just by the testimony but I'm humbled that by grace we have been able to stay with God and grow to a level where now the anointing we possess is above their challenges this is a very deep secret that many of you will catch as you grow in ministry it's working in me it's working in me it's God's ability God's ability It's working in me It's working in me Listen You know you possess an anointing When certain testimonies start repeating themselves When you begin to hear repeated testimonies then you know the same way a woman cooks and before you get to her restaurant psychologically you have tasted the food because you know she's not going to tell you sorry today this year i'm born she's left that level that's why they put a price tag on their food you buy rubbish for 200 naira anything you see smoky or not you manage it because you know what you paid for but when you pay 10,000 naira for a meal, listen, what will make men leave their nation and come to you? Are you that important? Because you think your name is Joshua Selman? Are you that important? That a man can... Let me tell you something. Most people say people are busy. Nobody is busy. Everybody is looking for solution. If you become what they are running around looking for, I promise you, you can hold koinonia every day by 10 30 to 3 a.m in the morning notice the time 10 30 to 3 a.m men will still come and you'll be wondering are you not a government worker again and they will say the last person you prophesy to his salary for 30 years came to him in one year why should i want to labor like that you are not a blessing when you are not anointed i'm telling you this learn it understand this speak grammar speak hebrew words speak greek do anything you want to do if you cannot reveal christ he said great is the mystery of godliness christ is come in the flesh the word becoming flesh that men and women can carry their results a man comes here not loving god and hearing you speak something infects him he goes back and does not even know what is happening to him again Look how long it takes people in the body of Christ to adjust to spiritual things. They get born again in January. No passion in the atmosphere they got born again. It's in November they now consider being filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh no, there's no fire there. There is a way you can step into an anointing. Huh? The lifespan of your journey is one week. In one week it will look like you've been born again for 10 years because of the impact of the grace you came under i made a vow to myself i said i will never go to a ministry twice to reveal christ there twice no no that you invite me and say come again it's like pushing a wall let's keep pushing uh -uh. i prepare my spirit that if god grants me an opportunity to come to your city or your area then you know something dramatic will happen can men come to you? Are you that valuable? I watch people trivialize the Holy Spirit. I watch people trivialize the anointing. 
and then somehow they think the key is just to receive laying on of hands oh man of god i came with a seed of one million just lay hands on me and then you go to another one lay hands on me and it's as if you are shopping for anointing and then you bring it and say now i have what it takes you are joking you are really joking you believe spiritual things are that cheap i came to challenge you there is where god is taking you to don't 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 rob yourself of the privilege of standing before nations to be a representation of the power and the grace and the glory of God. Look at the testimony of that dear lady. 4.69, you get 4.69. If it's cheap, try it. Go and prophesy to somebody after this night that you will come back with the same result. And then you see that it's not so easy. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference. When Ben Hinn came to Nigeria two weeks ago, look at the rush, look at the preparation. Literally, he kept the body of Christ at a standstill. Is it true that everything he shared, you have never had it? Will you be honest to say you have never had it? Is it true that what he taught you has never been heard? He has repeated it in many churches. He has taught series on it. So why seek him? Why crowd yourself outside in overflows? Why sit down and stream? Why cancel your programs? You didn't bring a man. You brought a grace. You brought an anointing. You brought a priceless ability that can turn the lives of people around. Now, foolish people say, what is there about them? No. No. When you honor a man, you don't honor a body. You honor sacrifice. You honor a depth of sacrifice that has afforded God space to move through that vessel in a mighty way. Listen, listen, look up. Let me tell you something. Come, David Dam. Let's assume David Dam has, let's assume that he has um, high blood pressure or HIV. Watch this. Don't you think God wants to heal him on Wednesday? Don't you think God wants to heal him next year? The desire of God to heal him is the day someone who has paid the price to give God space to release that dimension of his possibility. When that vessel appears, his healing has come. Why do people sit on a wheelchair till an anointed man comes? Is it that that's the day God wanted to heal them? That's the day the anointing that could solve that problem stepped in. There are men that step into places and they just shift atmospheres just like that but they never started that way i shared a verse of scripture that i would want to share with us the lord thank you david the lord gave me an instruction to repeat a few portions of what i shared in the meeting today with us and it will bless you luke 180 please luke chapter 1 verse 80 Luke chapter 1 verse 80 This was our first prayer point yesterday at the conference And I want to establish it again And then we will pray Luke chapter 1 media please help us I want us to pray tonight Luke chapter 1 verse Are you there? The first four words, please, if you are a Christian. One, two, read. One more time. One more time. Put your name where there is child. Yeah, ready? One, two, go. So men can grow. So men can grow. The problem is not where I am. I know I may not be so anointed now. I know I am barren of understanding but the Bible reveals to us that there is a possibility in the spirit where men can leave their current spiritual level to a pedestal that is higher and the child John the Baptist grew he was ordained a prophet from prophecy but he was born a child and the child 
when I found this scripture, I jumped. I said, so men can grow. Once upon a time I was not here, I grew. Meaning there are levels I should get to that I'm not yet there. I can grow. Growth is a secret. Growth is a provision in the body that translates men into limitless possibilities. I can grow. And the child, John, grew to become a prophet. And the child, naive, barren of any sensory perception into the realm of the spirit. No prophetic acumen. And the child grew. Men can grow. I'm not hearing God now. You can grow. I'm not anointed now. I can grow. My company is nothing to write home about. It can grow. My marriage is nothing to write home about. It can grow. My home is full of children who are disturbing. They will grow. Growth is a mystery that when you understand, you know there is hope. And the child grew. And ENI, that little ministry that was meeting on the floor, grew to what it is now. And Koinonia is growing. Ten years from now when we stand before the nations and we look at the photos of today, as excited as we are about today, we will nod and say, that's David Dam. And they say, who? That guy is shaking the nations and David Dam grew. Ah, look at mama, look at Femi, promise. These guys are just shaking nations in different territories and you will watch the pictures and see them sitting down and they and they will see some of you who are seated now as if you don't know anything about the anointing when they hear and say my god that is the woman of god whose crusades are packed full everywhere she's the one can you see her face in that picture and the woman grew. men can grow into the anointing men can grow into limitless possibilities in the spirit the challenge is not where you are the challenge is do you want there was a day this guy when he joined the worship team he could not play keyboard like this he challenged himself his music director and his leaders challenged him and he decided to grow now when i learned how to play keyboard i don't think this guy had laid his hand on a keyboard i began to play keyboard 1994 94 95 but i refused to grow so although it's that long where i stopped in the growth is still where i am today you can be born again for donkey years but the peg you gave god is still where he will faithfully stand and wait for you you can be ministry and the highest miracle you will ever see is headache because that's where you stopped the moment you got to that level of the anointing you graduated yourself awarded yourself and held a convocation for yourself but there are those who even at phd they say we are still undergraduates lord we are staying with you when i hear men like benny Hinn saying i still want more of his anointing i say my god more of what after shaking nations yet some of us are already here bragging in our arrogance oh i prophesied to sister so 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 it came to pass you think that's what you are going to use to shift nations you are joking and the child i want to show you that men don't just happen and work strong in spirit but the system is this he was in the desert he was in the place of training for David, it was the cave of Adulam. Listen, please hear me. I taught in the conference where we went to on the coming revival. And I mean, I think some of you need to get our external ministration. Sometimes I wish that I carry all of you along. And uh, because those meetings are usually very glorious meetings, very epochal teachings. And I taught yesterday on what we call the travail, the mystery of seasons, the mystery of the dealing of God in a man's life that brings the anointing the anointing does not come just because you want it the anointing is like a certificate that is given to you at the end of a season of being dealt with god and i want to share just a few parts of it and then we'll pray i want us to pray i'll just spend a few minutes 
and then we'll pray tonight. Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna run over. I wanna run over. Fill me up till I overflow. I wanna. In the name of Jesus, sing it for me. Another measure, another measure. Shabarada kada brada daba. Upon your life, upon your ministry. In the name of Jesus, I impart that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus, listen. In the name of Jesus. Bow down before you and then bow down before 
song from your spirit and just begin to exalt him there's something God is doing in your life find a song by yourself worship you're not wasting your time tonight I will not call on your name 
and end up in shame. Our world is full of men and women whose names are not powerful. You can call the name of a senator, you can call the name of your president, but there is a name. The Bible says the name of the Lord not only has power but is a strong tower. How can I call on your name and then end up in shame? Why will I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? Because you are my God. You are my God. soon going to sit down but don't disconnect from what God is doing if it's not in your presence if it's not by your hands and if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it for everything I need is in you if it's not in your presence there are many options but I choose your presence if it's not by your hand if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it me have if it's not in your presence if it's not by your hands if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it Lord, you are Don't sing it if you don't mean it. He's my everything. Everything. Lord, you are everything to me. One more time, lift your voice, everything. Everything, Lord, you are everything to me. Everything, everything, Lord, you are everything. Yeah. 
faithful God Hallelujah Hallelujah You're the healing God Hallelujah Hallelujah You're the lifting God Restoring God Hallelujah You do want to in this place That's our testimony You are lifting in this place mighty in this place you're the faithful God hallelujah You may not realize what is happening to you tonight. We're not just singing songs. There's something happening in the realm of the spirit. It's an exchange of your weakness for his strength. And I will lay down my idols, the thrones I have made, however I made them, and all that has taken my heart. Tonight I will lay down those idols, thrones I have made, and everything that has taken your place. Lord, I will lay down my idols, and thrones I have made. And all that has taken my heart Sing, Lord, I will bow To no other God But you Lord, I will worship you and nothing that hands have made, nothing hands have made, but you alone. Your name is called Emmanuel. Your name is called Emmanuel. Your name is called Emmanuel. Your name is 
saying I should speak to you that the season for restoration everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you Everything that was stolen It's a prophecy for you That everything that was lost Shall be returned unto you Everything that was stolen Prophesy to yourself now Everything that was lost Shall be returned unto me and everything that was shall be restored, shall be restored unto me. We prophesy everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored. One more time. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto me. It's a prophetic word for you. You may not see the wind, you may not see the rain, yet in this season, the Lord is filling your valley in a way. Listen carefully, we're going to sit down, but the Lord is filling your valley in a way that even you will know this one is the finger of God. You may not see the wind. I'm speaking to someone by the Spirit. You may not see the wind. You wouldn't know how it will happen that overnight they will say, is Saul also one of the prophets? How did it happen? You may not see the wind. You may not see the rain. But brothers and sisters, in this season, God is lifting men. You may not see the wind. I repeat, you may not see the rain. You may not see the person coming. Yet the finger of God, in a way that not even you can understand, will lift you in a way that will surprise everyone around you. Hi, Precious Saints. God bless you. This is Reflector Hub TV and it's our mandate that we proclaim jesus the crucified the resurrected lord of all over the nations and on this space we bring you glad tidings that your soul be refreshed that your soul be enlightened that your soul be transformed and because jesus is the alpha and the omega everything about your life has an ending point is the beginning and the end so be rest assured that whatsoever you're passing through as spoken and as declared as you been prayed for by god's servant apostle joshua selma on this platform just believe it that everything god has spoken about your life will definitely come to an end 
everything you are passing through that seems not to give glory to Jesus, God is putting an end to it. So be rest assured and believe that He is doing wonders in your life. God bless you. Stay tuned and do ensure you get this message across to your friends, family, and neighbors. Ensure they to get blessed by sharing this video. And in case you are a new viewer, would like you to hit the subscribe button. Ensure you subscribe to this channel and stay in touch with us by hitting the notification bell. God bless you. We love you so much.